druids have the ability to turn into animals uh, that they've seen at second level. So turning into a donkey, and then we had the set rule that when I transform, I don't have my gear on me. So I was a donkey, someone found me, led me to the place I needed to go, and then I transformed back and I was a naked man standing there with a bunch of stuff on my back. That was, that was a good memorable moment. Dungeons and Dragons is a role-playing game, uh, which means that you and a group of friends uh, create a fantasy-type story um, by making up some characters and then proceed to do a campaign in a setting with many different goals set by the DM. Dungeon Master, basically, I suppose if you want to say, he's God. So he gets to determine whatever goes on. And you basically just describe what you want to do. And if at any point there is uh, an uncertainty of whether you succeed in what you're trying to do, then you bring out the dice and you use that to figure out if what you're trying to do works, if you manage to hit the goblin or um, climb up the wall or convince someone that you're just a guard and that you're not trying to kill anybody. But I mean, he killed most of you guys and like all the guys on the barge, so he might not be dead. If you do need our help, would, we might, we might leave our touch on that. It appeals to me in the way a lot of the things I personally do in my free time, like reading or playing video games. It's the, the, the escapism. I don't have to think about what, what my homework's due or, you know, what am I going to do about a job. I've got a job. I'm an adventurer. Your dungeon master has placed you in a dreadfully precarious position. You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. I haven't gone to Italian Boys High School, which is a very rugby orientated school. Myself and uh, a few others that were also of uh, similar geek ilk. Um, used to hide in abandoned uh, classrooms or at the back of the library and, and get stuck into that. So it was more a case of, well, we aren't on the rugby field, because if we were, we're being used as the ball. And instead we were getting together um, doing these campaigns. I usually end up playing a rogue or a, a sneaky type character, but I do like to branch out and try other things. Um, my current character is a cleric, so I'm like the healer of the party. I like half elves because they get you know bonuses from being half human, plus they can grow facial hair. I was playing a rogue and I managed to be sneaky enough that I ran in front of this goblin, hid in a bush and then um, tripped him over and stabbed him as he ran past. My favourite character was a level 64 magic user uh, who at that level could kick some major butt. I also enjoy simply the, the fantasy aspect, you know, just the fantasticism. Lightning bolts and casting spells and oh I've got pointy ears because I'm an elf. It's 20 foot, and it's actually just lights at the bottom. No, no, it's just, just a 20 foot drop. I think back when my dad played Dungeons and Dragons, it was much more of a known about thing. And it sort of went down into the basement, and now it's back, and uh, people are taking notice again. Action fantasy games such as Skyrim, which also have a role playing element, have also helped this image because, you know, you're still slaying monsters, and it's like, Argh! manly, masculine. It's like, ah, this is based quite off D&D and other role-playing games. Modern day games, if they're run by a computer, they were run by a programmer. It had to have certain specific parameters. You can't go outside those parameters. And uh, whereas with these sorts of role-playing games, the world's your oyster. You can decide what you want to do. And the DM can say, oh, you decide to do this? Okay, it, I don't have anything written down, but I can think on my feet and go, this is how they respond. It does, yeah, it's a very big double door that reaches okay. like top to bottom. I think there is a place for <laughs> tabletop role playing today because there's still uh, so much that video gaming can't do and it can never be as social as uh, tabletop role playing is because you can sit alone at home um, playing a video game, but with a tabletop game, you, you can't do that. You have to get a group of friends together. Can you assume that he might be dead? Oh yes. God, this was a bad idea. It feels like you have an impact on the in-game world. When you kill that goblin horde that was raiding the nearby town, that town's no longer being raided by goblins. That is a direct cause and effect. And that's something that a lot of people don't feel in today's society, that they don't make a difference. So if you were that 
geeky computer nerd. You could be this paladin who was waging war on evil law. Or if you were a little goody two-shoes, you could be an assassin or a thief and, you know, create all sorts of chaotic trouble. Um, you get to take uh, a lot more ownership and I enjoy that creative challenge uh, because I enjoy acting and improvising. Uh, that's one of my main other hobbies and it lets me look at that from a different angle. It's as limitless as your imagination. Ragnar, the mage, is a chaotic neutral. He wants to be ultimately unpredictable, which sometimes means he has to do something that you'd predict a normal person to do in order to, you know, be unpredictable. You wouldn't predict the unpredictable guy to do the predictable thing.